A brand new trailer for the Detective Pikachu movie has been released, and despite what you think about the movie or how you feel it's going to be, one thing I don't think that can't be ignored and that was really surprising in this trailer is that there's a lot of lore that's actually being packed into this movie. We're getting to see a side of Pokemon that hasn't really been seen all that much before. Usually in the games, there's just a focus on training, or even the spin-off games, it's mainly focused around battling or capturing. But in this, we're actually seeing how Pokemon would function in a society. Uh, I mean, we get to see Golurks, Growlithe, Arcanines patrolling this police station, which seems really cool. We get to see Pokemon not being used just for pets or for battling, but also as functioning members of Rhyme City. Some of them even seem to have jobs. Jobs, whether it's this traffic controlling Machamp or the Barista Ludicolo. The setting of Rhyme City seems to be very fleshed out and well thought out for this movie. And even looking at just utilizing Pokemon abilities in everyday life. If there was a monster in your world that was based around sound and it had speakers for ears, of course you would use it when you DJ. I know that some people are put off by the design choices of the Pokemon, but they have done a pretty decent job, I think at least, of incorporating these monstrous looking animals and creatures into a real life setting. Some pull it off better than others, but overall I think there's a fair amount of balance between the cartoony looking style from the games, but also a realistic take on those styles. But in the second trailer, we're beginning to get more pieces of what the story actually is. We know that Pikachu has amnesia, is trying to figure out where it came from, what happened to its original partner. But we're getting a lot of lore sprinkled in there too. I mean, as you can see in what's pictured there, we got this capsule or kind of this pod. It looks like a Saiyan pod actually, but it's very reminiscent of Mewtwo's pod from the first movie. And this could be the same kind of pod that we see the Greninja coming out of, but it definitely looks like they've undergone some kind of genetic manipulation or augmentation coming out of a lab, out of these capsules. Not only have genetics of Pokemon been a sticking point, especially for villainous teams that are trying to manipulate that genetic data, but also for this real world setting where you have to think that these humans are living alongside other sentient monsters that can work on their own, they're free thinking, they have their own language. So of course there would be extensive study and research on where these things actually come from and what they're made of. And we get to see a pretty big indicator of that when we see this hologram of an EV evolving into a Flareon, which I think is a hologram. It may just be an actual EV evolving. But EV is important because in the Pokedex injuries, we know that its genetic makeup is unstable. And that's why it can evolve in so many different directions based on these radioactive rocks that you touch to it. But in the background, we see the creation trio. We have Palkia, Dialga, and Arceus, meaning that in this world, if it's not a definite fact, it's at least speculated through this research that these Pokemon have deity-like powers. They are basically gods of space and time and creation, which would tie into the idea that if you can control Pokemon, you can actually control these deity-like concepts as well. Which is where my speculation for the plot of the movie goes, as we see at the end of the trailer when Mewtwo is revealed that... It's out there looking for this Pikachu for some reason. Pikachu's running from it. Much like the trio of Greninja we see that are also chasing Pikachu, they seem to be an agent of this laboratory or this research organization. And it makes me wonder how much they're actually going to touch upon the origins of Mewtwo, since it would be a great opportunity to bring in the philosophy and the ethics of genetic manipulation. Since Mewtwo is an artificially created being, and in this movie it seems like it's not acting of its own free will, it's doing the bidding of this organization. And as this scene plays out in the trailer, it looks like Mewtwo is utilizing its psychic abilities as its eyes are glowing purple, which is a carryover from the anime. But we also see an Apom with purple eyes, and this may indicate that it's also being psychically controlled either by Mewtwo or by the organization, since this Pokemon is also seen to be attacking Detective Pikachu. But this could also just be a design choice. Apom is purple, so it's going to have purple eyes. Or as a broader theme, it may just be that all bad Pokemon in this movie have purple eyes. Because the Charizard in this movie also has purple eyes, and that does not seem to fit with it thematically, it's an orange dragon dinosaur, so purple eyes, eh. What I think is more likely is that Mewtwo is psychically controlling different Pokemon to achieve goals of the organization, but what I hope is actually reality is that Mewtwo itself is being controlled and that later it turns on the organization, making it a more sympathetic character. 
the versions of Mewtwo that we've got in the first movie as well as in the Genesect movie have both been very sympathetic where they're questioning why they were created, what their purpose is in life. So I would like to see this version stay consistent with those. Even though it's not completely evident on the surface level for this trailer, my main takeaway is there's a lot packed into this movie. There's a lot that is to be inferred about the way this world works and where these Pokemon come from, what their purpose is overall. Just from the background of the trailer, we can assume that there are Pokemon with legendary status in this world, that Pokemon have their own creation myth, and that the data that we know from Pokedex entries is applicable to these Pokemon as well, that there's an unlimited amount of possibilities of how you can apply these Pokemon and their various powers and quirks to the fundamental mechanisms of Rhyme City and how those have developed over time. This is a world where Pokemon have seemingly always existed. So how has that affected the culture in this universe? These are bits of information that we have gotten from time to time in the games, but they're very sparse since it, the focus is more on the battle mechanics and the story. It happens within each isolated game region, but we've never got this expansive of an information dump that really confirms what Pokemon are and where they come from. Rhyme City also seems to be very isolated and unique in the way that Pokemon and people intermingle in this society. So I would like to see more explanation of why it's unique and why this isn't the case for other regions that we have seen. It's also really hard to gauge how excited people actually are about this movie. Uh, so let me know down in those comments. Are you excited about this movie? Are you excited to hear more about the lore of the Pokemon universe? As always, thank you for watching and see you next video.